Tower, Compass 6078, our gate is open. 6078, thanks, Golf, uh, golf Cross, number 7 left, and ground point 75. At Golf Cross 7 left, ground point 75, Compass 6078. Hey guys, um, so I wanted to show what I've been doing with the uh, SimVim cockpit. I've been building some switch panels mostly to use with a Zeebo Boeing 737-800 on X-Plane 11 and uh, you know this is something I just started doing about two months ago I don't have a lot of experience with it I've never actually tried doing anything like this before but SimVim cockpit is pretty easy to use so even if you don't have any experience you can pretty much get it running and what I have right here, um, basically what I built was this top panel right here. Basically supposed to simulate the, the light switch panel. So let me, um, I'm going to go set it up over here. So pretty much um, that's the area that I wanted to replicate on the switch panel. And I'm using it with the uh, halogen lights on the Zeebo Mod 737. So it has uh, four sets of uh, landing lights. The two that are retractable and then the two that are fixed. So as I go through the switches, you can see each one of the switches in the simulator will move. The wing light, the beacon light, the position and strobe light obviously has two two positions and the engine start switches they've actually uh, they've given me a lot of trouble because for a while they were working and then they stopped working every time that uh, Zebo made some changes to the airplane couldn't get him to work but luckily Vlad is very responsive and as soon as I told him that they, they stopped working, he pretty much got him working, you know, within a couple of minutes again. And they go through all four positions. The only thing I don't have on them is uh, for them to bounce back, you know, after, after you put them on ground and then they're supposed to bounce back. I don't have that integrated into my actual switches here. So I have to physically move them you know back to auto and then to continuous the APU it has both positions so if you see I can actually get the APU started by holding it down momentarily and then once the exhaust gas temperature starts rising just let it go and it will start up um, the APU taxi lights runway turn off lights Oops. these are the fixed landing lights and these are the retractable landing lights So finally I got all of those working. It's uh, pretty amazing how easy it is to do this stuff. I know I've heard a lot of conversations about using uh, Air Manager 3.5 I think it is. But I've never messed around with it and I actually I found this so easy to use that I just kept on going with this and never even uh, tried gear Air Manager at all. So this other part that I have here, this is actually the, it's supposed to be the MCP panel. Um, I'm not making a lot of these switches and switch panels that I'm making. Uh, I'm not making them look like the real thing right now. Mostly because I was just learning, you know, as I went. Uh, so I just wanted to build something that was useful. And I concentrated mainly on using the switches and everything that we use all the time that are uh, that come in very handy to have them easily accessible 
rather than having to look on the screen with a mouse you know switching views and looking for that button or that place to click on so for me this is a lot better to just be able to actually reach over and grab an actual knob or push a switch so as I go through these uh, you can see that for example this is a course I can change the course up or down here and these are all um, rotary encoders for these that I'm showing you right now there's the speed the heading and then also I got the, the bank angle the altitude and then I have the other course knob over here on this side and then I also have the command A the command B and the CWS A and the CWS B I have the speed intervention button and the altitude intervention button and then the two flight directors as well so as if you can look at the screen also when I move the flight directors um, I'm using some of the SATEC panels too but mostly I'm using those for example for the radio stack I'm using SATEC panels and the multi, multi switch panel I'm using mostly for the autopilot vertical speed and the auto throttle engage um, that's pretty much the only thing I use on that one as far as the EFIS panel I think I got every every single button that's on there working I think the only one that's not working right now is uh, the one to, to change the barometric uh, units from inches to hectopascals that one is not working um, oh no and also the the radio and um, barometric minimum switch is also not working correctly um, but I got the if you want to switch the VOR to ADF both 1 and 2 I can put the, the weather radar here which is really not modeled actually yet the stations the waypoints the airports the data when you have a flight a route that you can see the time when you're going to be approaching the next waypoints um, and the terrain radar works as well and also I can switch the flight plan which I don't have one right now to map to the VOR and to the approach I can switch through those with the buttons here and then of course the range I can go all the way from 5 miles all the way to the 640 so it's actually pretty handy to be able to do all that with buttons um, instead of failing when you're trying to do something on a critical moment of flight trying to find the right spot to click on it has really made the flying a lot more enjoyable now here in the middle of the yoke I added um, the auto throttle uh, disconnect warning light and reset the FMC reset button and the auto throttle disengage warning and reset so for example if I try to engage the auto throttle and then uh, you can't engage it right now because I'm on the ground and I don't have anything programmed you see that it starts flashing as well as on the screen itself and the cool thing about that one and all three of them actually is if I can just press it and it'll cancel out that warning same thing if I for example misalign the FMC on purpose and it gives you the message that you need to realign the FMC you see the yellow light turn on right there in the middle as well oh now that I'm here um, 
the master caution light is also working on there so when I get a master caution on the EFIS on the side of the EFIS there I get the light turned on and I can also cancel it by pressing down on it same thing goes for the other side so if I want to do the fire warning tests So on this panel I have the fire warning light, I have the transponder ident for the, navig for the radio for the transponder, I have the fuel flow uh, reset the, in the used switch, the wiper, I only have the right wiper at this time, the annunciator light test switch and this light I use it for to illuminate when I'm doing the annunciator light test but I don't have that one hooked up yet but if I wanted to do for example the annunciator lights so every annunciator in the airplane is turned on and going back to the window wiper it has all three positions so I can go to intermittent I can go to low or I can go to high another very cool thing that I added is a parking brake so I modified my my SATEC throttle quadrant a little bit here um, just basically put some plastic things over the over the handles and took off the little knobs and I have my flaps my throttle and my speed brake mapped to these and right next to it I have the brake handle with its corresponding light so I can actually just release the parking brakes simply by throwing the handle and of course the light will turn on and off according to if you turned on the parking brakes or turned them off uh, now with this latest version of the Zebo mod you actually have to step on the toe brakes and the brakes so that you can engage the parking brake if I just try to engage it like this nothing will happen so I actually have to step down on the brake in order for it to engage um, of course you can change that in the tablet settings so that it can be just the old-fashioned way where you could just flip it on and off without having to step on the brakes I am using a tablet just a little Samsung tablet as my FMC so that way instead of once again doing everything on the screen with a mouse I can just actually touch the the corresponding buttons and keys on my tablet um, and get it to go to you know the simulator I'm using the Pierskersky I think it is tablet that is for free in the Android store and I believe he has it for iOS as well oh another last couple of things that I have I also have the autopilot disengage knob down there I have the rudder trim I have the baro barometer um, adjustment knob another rotary encoder and also the minimums adjustment knob so you can um, raise and lower your minimums as needed and then I also put a button to return the landing gear to the off center position after you take off and put away the landing gear and um, that's pretty much it I have um, my checklist here little handy checklist that I made for flying here and then I also have a uh, a keypad that I color coded with uh, the different views for all the different positions that I use most often and also on the keyboard I labeled the couple of keys that I put uh, set up for when I fly on VATSIM um, I can bring up the who's online and the text box and then uh, sending the messages with the return key um, that's pretty much it I just basically use my second monitor 
right now as my charts or sometimes I just put the instruments on there too so I can look up uh, I know that you can you do it on the tablet but it seems to me that it has been a little bit less responsive and it seems like it's a little bit harder to read it on there so for me it's just a lot easier to to do it on here and then I also have uh, another copy of the instruments right there which are bigger a lot easier to see okay so now that you've seen how everything looks from the front I kind of wanted to show you guys how it looks like from the back all the wiring I'm using uh, those relays there for the lights, um, for the parking brake, the fire warning annunciator, and for the master caution switch because those are 12 volt lights and on the Arduino I could only output 5 volts um, so they're a little bit dim so I just did a different thing using those relays to um, supply 12 volts um, and I use one of the outputs on the Arduino for the annunciator to indicate when they should turn on and off. Um, the other ones for the autopilot, auto throttle and the FMC warning and disengage buttons I just supplied those with 5 volts and they seem to be okay but this is the rat, rat's nest that I have right now behind the panel. Uh, it looks pretty complex now. <laughs> and this right here is just another small sample test panel that I have uh, pretty much one of each buttons hooked up to it right now so that I can try different functions I have a on and off switch a three-way on off on switch I have a push button a rotary encoder a potentiometer and a eight position rotary switch so um, whenever I want to try out if a new function command works I try it out with this and this is where all the wiring comes in right here um, b basically the little 16 channel MUX boards all come to here to this little um, brown board and then that one connects to the Arduino which is right there and it sends all the commands over to my computer which is running Xplain uh, so everything all these buttons and switches and everything is hooked up through one Arduino and a bunch of the 16, 16 uh, channel MUX boards that pretty much they look like this so each one of those can have 16 different buttons or switches or anything attached to it for example right here I have one And over here I have two more. There's another one right there. And then there's another one right there. 